Hey YouTube, this is Austin from austinsnerdythings.com. Today we are going to talk about how to create a Proxmox Ubuntu Cloud Int Image. Int image. Um, so this is basically a method to download a base Ubuntu image from uh, Ubuntu um, into Proxmox and then give it some settings uh, and then convert it into template so you can use it over and over and over again. Um, this way you don't have to you know, come up with a base install every time you create a new virtual image um, and further we will use this image later on to deploy using Terraform uh, to create a number of virtual machines at once uh, via automation for a Kubernetes cluster. So um, the screen is up on the blog post I wrote. Um, We'll basically be following along there uh, and doing this live with a little bit of explanation. Um, so here's some background for why I wanted to do it. Um, essentially, we are going to be doing steps one through five here. Uh, step one is download the base image. Uh, number two is install some packages. Uh, this is mostly just QEMU guest agent uh, for Proxmox. Number three is create a Proxmox virtual machine using this image. Um, number four is convert it to a template. And then number five will be clone the template into a full virtual machine and set some parameters. Um, so I have the code here um, all ready to go and I will definitely link to this blog post uh, in this video description. So let's start right here. Um, number one is wget the cloud image. So um, just highlighted that and uh, let me actually get logged in here. So this is my default terminal. We're going to do Windows Subsystem for Linux and then we're going to SSH into our Proxbox host. Um, all right, so now we are ready to do some commanding. Um, all right, so number one is w get this image. All right, so it's now downloading. Um, I have a fairly decent internet connection. Tops out at you know 37 megabytes per second here. So um, this 50 or sorry, this 537 megabyte image is only going to take us 15 seconds to download. Okay, so. We have our image, uh, we hit ls, uh, we can see we've got our focal server downloaded right here. Um, if you really want to see the details of it, we can see that uh, you know, this was when it was created. Um, so this is newer than the one that I originally did this tutorial with, um, August 31st, uh, 4.39 p.m., which is two days ago. Um, okay, so, so this here it took me a while to into my debugging process um, to figure out essentially that QEMU guest agent was not included. Um, so what we need to do is uh, update our package manager. Um, and for Proxmox, it's Debian based. It uses apt, uh, which is aptitude. Uh, so we're going to do apt update. We're going to update our packages. And then we are going to install this lib guest FS tools, uh, which is the library for guest file system tools. Um, and the dash Ys just say, yes, do this. Don't ask me if I really want to do this. All right, so since I have this installed, um, it didn't actually do anything. But if you would run this uh, and you don't have this installed, you would get this installed. Um, and it would take um, you know, a minute or two to get it installed. OK, so next step is install this QEMU guest agent into the newly downloaded image. So this command is, uh, you know, sudo is uh, run it as a super user. Vert customize is the actual tool. Um, I don't know what dash a does. Uh, you know, this is kind of a copy paste. Uh, so we're going to tell it to focus on this uh, specific disk image, and we're going to tell it to install the package QEMU guest agent. All right, so let's go ahead and copy that. And then it will essentially do an apt update and then an apt install into the image. Um, this is a super powerful tool. I did not know it existed until I uh, started down this path. Um, I think you could really do the rest of this using just Vert Customize, um, but we are going to um, use the QM commands because those those just seem to make sense uh, to me at least. So, all right, 18 seconds to get that package installed. Um, next up is create a Proxmox virtual machine using the newly modified image. Um, okay, so actually let me delete this uh, because this already exists. So, okay, just time out here. Let's see if we're going to remove. 
AM 9000. Um, I don't know why it's 9000, but every tutorial I've seen uses 9000. So, okay, so we're going to sudo qm. qm is the qem uh, u command tool, essentially, command line um, utility for doing things with virtual machines and proxmox. So, okay, we're going to say qm create. Uh, this is the virtual machine ID 9000. We are going to name it uh, Ubuntu 2004 cloud init template. We're going to give it uh, two gigabytes of memory. We're going to give it two cores. We're going to give it a network adapter. Um, net zero of type vert io and we're going to connect it to the vmbr zero bridge on our proxmox host um, which is default um, you know basically all this stuff is relatively default uh, okay so paste that in done uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to import disk uh, into the vmid 9000 and we're going to import that file uh, that we just downloaded that is the ubuntu image um, and we're going to stick it in storage local zfs uh, I will warn you, this might be different for you if you, sorry, this will be different for you if you are not using ZFS. Uh, it could be local dash LVM if you were using Logical Volume Manager or Ceph or something else. Um, it could also just be local, depending on how you have your storage configured. Uh, okay, so we are going to import this disk. Um, this basically copies the file uh, from one place to another. All right, um, it also expands it. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the file itself that we downloaded, I think it was 537 megabytes. Um, and now we've got a 2.2 gigabyte image. So it did some expansion there. Um, okay, so this next one is, we are going to set some um, disk parameters, essentially saying it to you, telling it to use SCSI uh, zero, set it to this uh, image that we just imported um, from local ZFS. Uh, we will see that we have a VM. 9000, which is the ID we're working with, with disk zero. Okay, um, and then this is going to set that boot disk to that uh, device. Uh, next up is give it an IDE2 device uh, with an image of cloud in it. This, uh, I didn't download this, this uh, is default in Proxmox. Um, okay, so that's done also. This actually appears like a CD-ROM. Uh, which we'll go see in a minute, uh, because that's apparently how cloud and it works. Uh, we also need to give it a serial port, um, which is also how cloud and it does some of its stuff, um, and do something with this VGA. I don't actually know exactly what this does. I think it just redirects the output. <coughs> okay, um, so it says you can start the VM up at this point if you'd like and make any other changes if you want, because the next step is convert it to templates. Um, if you do log in, you're going to have to use vert customize to set a root password. Uh, you can click this link. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that because CloudInit is really meant for public private key authentication. Um, and you can follow along with this link for a SSH key tutorial for uh, how to do that. Um, so, okay, so if you made any changes, shut down the VM. We didn't. Um, if you didn't boot the VM, that's perfectly fine. We need to convert it to template. But before we do that, let's just go look at it. Um, so here's that 9000 that just popped up. Um, so, so we can see here we've got that SCSI 0 using the VM 9000 disk 0. That's that 2.2 gigabytes we just transferred. Here's the cloud init drive um, that says it's a CD-ROM, but it's not. We've got a serial port. We've got the network device. We've got 2 gigabytes of memory. We've got 2 cores. Um, this, is, this is ready to go. Uh, so with that... Um, we will convert it to a template with sudo qm templates and then the vmid. Okay, and now we have a functioning template. So it's going to change to look like this little icon. It's like a piece of paper with a computer monitor in front of it. Um, that, and that just indicates that it is a template. Um, okay, so next up is uh, clone the VM and set some parameters. Um, okay, so we're going to clone this virtual machine to from that ID 9000 to a new one with an ID of 999. We're going to call it Test Clone Cloud Init. All right, it says it's done. Uh, so next we're going to set the SSH keys and the IP address. 
Uh, so we're going to say QM sets VMID 999, that, uh, this is the one we're working with, and set the SSH key to, um, you know, this is basically the home directory of whatever machine you're on. Uh, use the public key there. Uh, if you don't have this generated, follow along in um, this tutorial, and you can generate your SSH keys there, and then you can use this. Uh, it's really easy. If you watch another minute, um, I'll show you how easy it is. Okay, so there's the SSH key on that guy. Um, we need to set the IP address as well. Um, and I'm going to give this a different IP address. I'm going to do 95 because 96 would yell at me because the key already exists. Um, okay, so now we can start it up. Um, we can either do it with the command here, sudo qm start 999, or we can come over here. You can see it's created. Uh, we can just start it here. Um, but since we've been using the command line so far, let's go ahead and do that some more. So we'll do sudo qm start 999. All right, and now we will go over here and we will watch uh, watch this boot up over here in the console. <coughs> Alright, so it's ready for us to log in, but it's still doing some updating and stuff. Um, so it says it's updating open VM tools. So basically we're just going to let it do its thing for another couple of seconds here. <clears throat> Alright, that should be enough. Um, and so now we can SSH in with uh, the username Ubuntu. So it's not whatever the key was created with. Um, the username is definitely Ubuntu. All right, so we'll do SSH Ubuntu at 10.98.195, uh, because that's what I changed. Um, you know, I do have this since 96 here, um, but I changed it to 95 on the fly. Um, it says, you know, this always pops up first time you're connecting to the host. Do you want to trust it? Yes. And we're in. So it's that easy. Um, you know, this whole tutorial has been recording for 12 minutes. Um, but really, you can just fly through, copy paste all these. You can even stick them in a shell script and uh, just execute it on the fly. You know, I think it would probably take maybe a minute max. Um, and you can really have this scheduled. Uh, so I do talk about that here a little bit. Um, I have not done so yet, but if you create virtual machines on a somewhat regular basis, it wouldn't be hard to stick all of this into a shell script and run it via cron on a weekly basis or whatever. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys are like me, but create virtual machines, I don't know, once, maybe once or twice a month, uh, depending on what you're doing, sometimes a lot more than that. And the first thing I do when I make a new VM up until now is apt update. And it would usually say something like 176 packages can be upgraded. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, you know, I should have downloaded a new file, and why didn't I do that? And I guess I'll kick this off and go drink a coffee or tea or beer or whatever and just come back when it's done. But um, if you run the script on a regular basis, you know, this, you can always have a VM ready for you. Um, you know, it's, this could be a bit of a game changer. So, um I, I will work on that script. Um, it should be pretty straightforward. It's essentially everything we just did. Um, the only thing you would have to modify for your own use is whatever uh, the IP address is. Um, but other than that, it should be a pretty straightforward process. So um, that's that. Uh, and now, since we don't need this, you know, this is a, if we look at the host name here, the host name is test clone cloud in it. So this is a test machine, we don't need it, so we're just going to shut it down. Let's shut down dash H for halt now, because we don't want to wait. Uh, of course we need to do this with sudo. Uh, that was weird, I don't know why it's... Did it do with the home key? Alright, sudo shut down, done. So it's shutting down, so now we're back to the Proxmox host here. So we can do stop, uh, which it already is stopped, and then destroy, because we don't need it anymore. And then fully clean up, what we will do is we will remove that disk image. Done. So we're right back where we started. Um, 
and we have we still have this template it is available um, you know all you have to do is you can right click and clone if you're in the UI or you can do it with the command um, you know QM clone whatever the existing ID is to the new ID and then give it a name uh, so pretty cool process um, a lot of people were saying hey why don't you use cloud in it for everything you know why are you kind of mixing and matching technologies um, the answer is this is how I saw it for the first time it makes sense to me um, yeah it is a little bit of a mismatch but um, you, know, you gotta start somewhere if there's a better way to do it I'll find it uh, but you gotta start somewhere so you know as they say put the pen to paper make it happen uh, if you come across a way to improve it improve it um, but with that, we will finish off here. Uh, be sure to check back soon for the next video uh, of how to deploy virtual machines in Proxmox with Terraform. So it's essentially what we just did, but fully automated. Um, using the template, we're going to create four new images for a Kubernetes cluster. So, all right. Thanks for watching, you guys. I uh, hope you have a good one. If you liked this, uh, click like, and then go ahead and also click subscribe. Um, if you do look at my video history, I won't be doing too many more Call of Duty videos, so I'll be focusing mostly on technology and nerdy things from here on out. Alright, thanks for watching Austin's Nerdy Things, and we'll see you next time.